Hello everyone. Welcome to Digital Communication Tutorials. In this video, I'm going to discuss the direct sequence spread spectrum modulation technique. Please note this can be also understood as the notion of spread spectrum technique. An important attribute of spread spectrum modulation is that it can provide protection against externally generated interfering or jamming signals with finite power. The jamming signal may consist of a fairly powerful broadband noise or a multi-tone waveform that is directed at the receiver for the purpose of disrupting the communication. Protection against jamming waveforms is therefore provided by purposely making the information bearing signal occupy a bandwidth much larger than the minimum bandwidth necessary to transmit the same. This has the effect of making the transmitted signal assume a noise-like appearance so as to blend in to the background. The transmitted signal is thereby enabled to propagate through the channel undetected by anyone who may be listening. We may therefore think of spread spectrum as a method of camouflaging the information bearing signal. One of the methods of widening the bandwidth of an information bearing sequence involves the use of modulation. Specifically, the data sequence B of T is used to modulate a wideband pseudo noise sequence, which is also called as PN sequence, by applying these two sequences to a product modulator or simply a multiplier. You should note for this operation to work, both sequences should be represented in their polar forms. That is, in terms of two levels equal in amplitude and opposite in polarity. An example would be symbol 1 represented by plus 1 and symbol 0 represented by minus 1. We know from Fourier transform theory that multiplication of two unrelated signals produces a signal whose spectrum equals the convolution of the spectra of the two component signals. Therefore, if the data sequence B of t is narrowband and the PN sequence C of t is wideband, then the product signal, let it be denoted by M of t, will have a spectrum that is nearly the same as that of the PN sequence. That is, the product signal M of t will be a wideband signal. So, we can say that the PN sequence performs the role of a spreading code. Figure 1 here shows the idealized transmitter model for a baseband spread spectrum system. By multiplying the information bearing signal B of t by the spreading code C of t, each of the information bit is chopped up into a large number of small increments which are called as chips. For baseband transmission, the product signal M of t represents the transmitted signal. We may therefore express the transmitted signal M of t as B of t multiplied by C of t. This is given in equation 1 here. The spreading of the information bearing signal at the transmitter is illustrated in the waveform shown here. The first waveform we have here is that of the information bearing signal which is B of t. Then we have the spreading code which is the PN sequence represented as C of t. You should note the spreading signal C of t must always have a higher frequency compared to the data signal B of t. When we multiply the data signal B of t with the spreading code C of t, we will obtain the product signal M of t. This is a simple multiplication operation. For example, when I take this particular duration, we have C of t negative but B of t positive. Therefore, for this duration, we will have the product signal M of t to be negative. When both B of t as well as C of t are positive, we will obtain the product signal as positive. Similarly, when both B of t and C of t are negative, we will obtain the product signal to be positive. Let us now have a look at the channel model for the baseband system. Here, we assume that the channel is affected by interfering signal. Therefore, the received signal R of t is the sum of the transmitted signal M of t plus the interfering signal. So, I can write R of t as M of t plus I of t. This is what is given in equation 2 here. That is, 
r of t equals m of t plus i of t. But from equation 1, we have m of t as c of t multiplied by b of t. So, let me substitute this equation into equation 2 and therefore, the received signal can also be written as c of t into b of t plus i of t. Figure 4 here indicates the idealized receiver model for the baseband band spread spectrum system. To recover the original data sequence b of t, the received signal r of t is applied to a demodulator that consists of a multiplier followed by a low pass filter. The multiplier is supplied with a locally generated pn sequence that is an exact replica of the one that is used at the transmitter. Further, we also assume that the receiver operates in perfect synchronization with the transmitter, which means that the PN sequence in the receiver is lined up exactly with that in the transmitter. Therefore, the resulting demodulated signal, which is denoted here by Z of t, can be given as R of t multiplied with C of t. This is given in equation 3 here. So, Z of t equals C of t into R of t. Now, from equation 2, we find R of t to be C of t into B of t plus I of t. I will substitute this equation into equation 3 and I will simplify to obtain the demodulated signal as C square of t into B of t plus C of t into I of t. From equation 3, we find an interesting note that is the desired signal B of t is multiplied twice by the spreading code C of t whereas the unwanted signal i of t is multiplied only once. Coming to the spreading code, we previously said both b of t as well as c of t are represented in their polar format. Therefore, the spreading code c of t alternates between the levels minus 1 and plus 1 and this alternation is destroyed when c of t is squared. Therefore, c square of t is equal to 1 for all values of t. By substituting equation 4 back into equation 3, I can simplify the expression for the demodulated signal as z of t equals b of t because c square of t is 1 plus c of t into i of t. From equation 5, we see that the data sequence b of t is reproduced at the multiplier output in the receiver except for the effect of the interference represented by the additive term c of t into i of t. Multiplication of the interfering signal i of t by the locally generated pn sequence c of t means that the spreading code will affect the interfering signal just as it did for the original signal at the transmitter. We now therefore observe that the data component B of t will be the narrow band signal whereas the component C of t into I of t will be wide band. Therefore, by applying the multiplier output Z of t to a base band low pass filter with a bandwidth that is just large enough to accommodate the recovery of the data signal B of t, the component C of t into I of t is made narrow band thereby removing most of its power. The effect of this interference is therefore significantly reduced at the receiver output. This is the reason why we use a baseband low pass filter. Right. In summary, the use of a spreading code such as a PN sequence in the transmitter produces a wideband transmitted signal that appears noise like to a receiver that has no knowledge of the spreading code. It should be noted that the longer we make the period of the spreading code, the closer will be the transmitted signal to a truly random binary wave and the harder it will become to detect the same. The price we have to pay for the improved protection against interference is increased transmission bandwidth, system complexity and processing delay. However, when the primary concern is the security of transmission, these trade-offs are completely justified. Right, that is about this brief discussion on the notion of direct sequence spread spectrum. If you like this video, kindly press that like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos on digital communication. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.